This nice picture frame is a free sample SCL file included in every Desproto download. A perfect geometry for a first Desproto project. The current tutorial video about creating a picture frame in wood shown here is quite old though it was made using Desproto version 6. This new video shows the process in Desproto version 7.1 combined with the old shots of the actual milling process. Ok, let me start Desproto version 7.1 to show you how to create toolpath for the picture frame sample geometry in this version of Desproto. Um, I'll start using the expert edition as the free edition and the entry edition do not include all parameter settings that I will use in this video. Expert and multi axis do. So start and the first thing I want to check is use samples folder that way when I uh, continue and I start loading geometry it will automatically be from the samples folder. I will use the wizard as that's the easiest method for you to uh, start using Desproto. The wizard will guide you ex to um, give answers for to set exactly those parameters that you need for a certain project. And in this case it's geometry machining because the picture frame is an SCL file, 3D geometry. And it's basic because we simply can create two paths from one side for three axis machining. The wizard will guide you along a number of screens, well we'll see that later, and offers several types of help. For instance these tooltips when you hoover the cursor over the question mark you get extra information and when that's not yet sufficient you can open the help page by pressing the help button and as you will see uh, many more background information is available for each uh, with each page of the wizard, and in fact for each every dialogue in Desproto. The machine to be used should already be the machine that you have as Desproto asks you which machine you have during setup. Um, if this is not uh, the correct machine you can change the default machine in the default project parameters which you can find in the options menu. For now I will start the basic geometry machining wizard. Next, so we are now on the second page. Um, and the first step in all cases is to load your CAD data in this uh, case a 3D geometry file, an STL file. The browse button will open the samples folder as I check that option and we go to the picture frame. Two versions are available, the millimeter version, this video is in millimeters, which is a picture frame of about 180 millimeters high, uh, correct for a standard picture size of 15 by 10 centimeters. The inch version will show uh, a picture frame of about 7 inches high for the standard picture size of roughly 6 by 4 inches. But well, as said, we use the millimeter version. We open it, and here you can see the geometry, a nice picture frame with a floral design over here. And that's what we are going to machine. Scaling, when I put it to dimensions, you can see it's about 100, 180 millimeters high. You can scale to any picture size you need. When you uncheck uniform, you can also uh, use a very different scaling for X and Y for pictures with, with a different ratio. But we'll keep it as it is for this tutorial. Um, orientation. Uh, orientation doesn't need to be changed here. I'll show you. Uh, on your 3-axis machine the cutter comes from the positive Z direction from above and so the current orientation is ok. The cutter can indeed machine the complete uh, geometry. I do not need to rotate it. So I can continue next and I come to page material and supports. The material by default the default block size is exactly the bounding box of the geometry. So from the minimum x to the maximum x of the SCL geometry for all axes. I want to change that here as 
uh, it says it's 14 millimeter thick. Uh, but my wooden, my block of wood, the block of wood that I want to use is 18 millimeter thick, and of course I want to have my uh, the roughing layers. We'll discuss that later. Start at the top of the actual block, so I want to make the block 18 millimeters high. I put it to custom therefore, and I w do not put 18 millimeters here, as that would leave my geometry centered in the block and. On, I only want to add four millimeter, four millimeters on top. So I go to detail settings, and for the maximum Z, which is now zero, I enter four. Okay, you can see it has been added here, and it's now roughly 18 millimeters high. So that's my block size. I do not want to use support tabs. Support tabs that connect the part to a larger block because my block is roughly on size and I will fixture it by using screws from below as I will show later in the video. So no support tabs. The workpiece is zero point, which is the blue cube that you can see over here. And that's Proto by default puts it on the left, you see the left front top corner of the block, which in on the machine is quite uh, quite a convenient location because when you have put your block on the machine you can move the cutter to that point touch the top of the block and in your control software say where the cutter is now is your workpiece zero point so that's okay as well i can continue to the next page of the wizard which is about roughing roughing is optional i can skip roughing as I, if I would like to, but I want to use roughing here. A ball nose cutter of 6 millimeters is okay. 1.5 millimeter distance between the tool path is okay. Feed rate, spindle speed, well I just keep the defaults, they are fine. Except here for the strategy. Uh, by default roughing uses this block strategy from outside slowly uh, to the inside, to the center, that way the chips can fall easily fall off to all sides. But for this geometry that would have a disadvantage, for the final layer, the bottom layer, the last path, pass, um, a block of wood would remain in the center of the part, completely cut loose, which would um, start moving and could damage the parts. So I do not want to use the block strategy for this geometry. I simply use parallel tool path. Uh, layers and skin. The skin is a bit of material that a layer of material that will remain uh, not machined around the part to be removed during finishing. That's a trick of roughing and finishing. Then the finishing is uh, the cutter is not heavily loaded so it won't uh, vibrate and a very high surface quality will result. Um, okay, layer size, the, the roughing passes is 6 millimeters. Let's see what happens. Calculate and I can see that one, two, three, four layers for roughing passes are used and the fourth is a bit, uh, a bit lower than the other. So what I want to do is I will make it 5.5, .5. calculate again. Now they're more similar, but so this is okay. This is my roughing. It will take roughly one and a half hours with those, with this feed rate. That's okay. I'll continue and go to the finishing operation. And for finishing, in order to clearly have all details on this full design visible, I need a smaller cutter. So I'll use a 2 mm bull nose, uh, distance of 5 toolpath per millimeter is ok. My feed rate for finishing may be a bit higher, as it's not heavy duty what needs to be done. For this small cutter I, I will also use a higher spindle speed strategy is ok. Calculate and here we are the toolpath for the floral design. And as you can see the center of the 
where the center of the frame where no geometry is present present is also machined so i want to correct that but that's not an option that the wizard offers so after completing the wizard i will make some more detailed settings um, next and the final one also optional is a contour only operation i will show you what it is um, here we are it's one line that exactly follows the contours of the geometry and that way any staircase effects which would be visible here after the parallel toolpath finishing operation would be nicely smoothed out by this uh, contour only operation uh, okay next so what i now can do is i can show a simulation what the result will look like and here you see the floral design is nicely detailed and I can hide that and I can I won't uh, write the NC program file here as I said I want to make some changes so I finish the wizard then now using those lamp icons I can make operations invisible so this is the roughing this is the finishing and here the contour only and I said in the finishing operation I want to make a change I double click and the area where no geometry is present is called the ambient area you can find it on the advanced page well in fact to explain all settings that we have just set in the wizard are available here as well in the operation parameters the wizard is just a tool to help you set exactly those parameters that are absolutely needed so for this geometry i go to the advanced step and here is an option called ambient skipping and i want to skip this ambient and in order to do that i need to uncheck the option to ignore the enclosed area for the ambient skipping so okay uh, simulation is reset no problem uh, multi diameter cutter that's okay as well many warnings and here you can see the center area now is skipped which will obviously reduce the milling time um, for the, in this video I will use the video shots of the actual machining of the previous video and in that old version of Desproto one more change was needed as there the um, a lot of positioning movements were visible here uh, so the strategy in that video was changed it's not needed here but still in order to have the same toolpath as in the later in the video I'll change the strategy here as well I'll change it to radio where the toolpaths go from the center over the geometry okay again the same warning oh, don't show that again and here we are and one more detail needs to be set I go back to my finishing operation strategy and I should have check this one also machine corners well the, uh, the the icon clearly shows what this means and we see in a result that indeed it will work so now we have the roughing finishing contour and now finally I can write the NC file yes I'll call it test yes save it already exists no problem and as you will see here in fact now two NC files has have been saved one for the roughing operation and one for the finishing and the contour reason is the, that two different cutters are used six millimeter ball nose two millimeter ball nose and my machine does not have an automatic tool changer it has not been configured in Desproto either so Desproto knows it needs to write two NC files so after completing the first file I can change my cutter and then start the second file so with these files I can go to the machine and prepare the block to be machined as said before I want to show you how I fixture this block of wood on the machine using a waste board which is a board like this that may be damaged 
The block of wood is attached on the board using four screws. Here they are from below. One, two, three, four. Uh, very simple. This is needed as a ball nose cutter will move below the bottom of the block as otherwise the part cannot be completely machined. As you can see this board has been used before which is absolutely fine. Mind that for this part the screws may not be in the center of the part. Ok, that's it. We can fixture this on the machine using a few clamps. The wasteboard now has been fixtured on the machine and the wood on top of it obviously. I have set the workpiece zero point here on the corner of the block, the top corner, exactly 18 mm above the bottom of the block. And as you can see here in the corner, the fixturing clamps are nicely far off so the cutter won't come any near. All has been set so we can start machining now.